Most of us are familiar with the old image. A lone message in a bottle floats up to a sandy shore. But today, finding bottles on the beach as we know is pretty commonplace. In fact, the seas are brimming with floating objects. Bobbing across the waves, there are as many as 46,000 pieces of plastic for every square mile of ocean. And the plastic doesn't disappear. Caught in global surface currents, a lot of it accumulates in the open ocean. Retired oceanographer Kurt Ebsmeyer researches the mysterious behavior of the ocean's surface currents by collecting and studying floating debris. They're like little hieroglyphs. My goal is to learn how to read the hieroglyphs. Ocean currents are water flows that persist over a particular geographic region. They're caused by the wind, the Earth's rotation, and even the gravitation of the moon. On the ocean surface, these currents have been hard to study because floating buoys and small probes are often washed away by the waves. Kurt Ebsmeyer's fascination with trash led to a new way of studying surface currents. Rather than relying on scattered buoys, Ebsmeyer discovered a way to use the millions of objects already floating across the ocean. The science is that a lot of this stuff has drifted thousands of miles. You know, the ocean currents only go about 10 miles a day, so that's slow. Right. I could walk that. So it's been years and years that this stuff Some has of been the, on the sea. Like this, this beam can float for 30 years, wow. which is awesome. It all started in 1992. A cargo ship traveling from Hong Kong to Tacoma, Washington, lost a container of plastic bathtub toys, and soon Ebbesmeyer began tracking the 29,000 plastic ducks, frogs, beavers, and turtles as they spread around the world. Normally, surface currents are invisible to the naked eye, but by following drifting objects like the toys, it's possible to visualize the current's movements. Nearly 1,000 of the tub toys drifted ashore on beaches, giving Ebbesmeyer data points to analyze the behavior of surface currents. It started with the Beachcomber Network. And there's thousands of people that report what's washing up. It took me a year of dogged detective work to try to find the ship. Kurt discovered where the toys had been dumped into the ocean, and he knew where they washed ashore, but he needed help mapping their paths. He enlisted the help of Jim Ingraham, a grad school buddy who developed OSCARS, a computer program that models surface currents. OSCARS stands for Ocean Surface Current Simulator. Jim had designed Oscars to help marine biologists track salmon migrations. But Kurt challenged his friend to predict the path of his drifting trash instead of swimming fish. And I told him the latitude, longitude, and day, you know, point A. He says, well, I'll, I'll get back to you. An hour later, and here's a map of where they went. And it was spot on. Oscars track surface currents using daily field pressure data. Sea level atmospheric pressure influences winds, and winds influence currents. By factoring the weight and the surface area of the toys, the program not only predicted where the floating toys would end up, it also mapped the routes they had taken. You can see the years ticking off over here. The big stars where they start, and these squares with red in them are where they washed up. And this magenta line is where the ducks went over the pole uh, all the way over to Britain. Whoa. In the years since the 29,000 toys went overboard, only about 1,000 have been discovered by beachcombers. According to the patterns mapped by Oscars, many more seem to be circling endlessly in the North Pacific gyre. A gyre is a loop of water or a vortex formed by currents. The, the North Pacific gyre that goes from Japan to Washington, down to Hawaii and back up again, measures about 12,000 miles around. The gyre's existence was known, but the computer's prediction of a swirling mass of trash in the middle of the gyre surprised everyone. This concentration of debris became known as the Great Garbage Patch, and according to Ebbesmeyer, it's the size of Texas. Well, what happens is you put anything in the North Pacific and around and around and around it goes, and it gets smaller and smaller and winds up in the garbage patch. The existence of the Great Garbage Patch was verified in 1999, when the Algeda research vessel headed out from California. You have to have people out there actually measuring things. The computer's great, tells you where to go, but you've got to go. After seven days on the water, the Algida arrived at the heart of the Great Garbage Patch. The research vessel just cruised right into the center of the patch and sampled, and bingo! Right at the heart of the garbage patch was six times more plastic than plankton. When the winds managed to dislodge bits of trash from their circular path, they sometimes wash ashore. Some of the world's worst beaches are natural entrapment areas. The shape of the land juts into the current's path. 
This makes them something between garbage dumps and a beachcomber's dream. I decided to join Kurt and his team of extreme beachcombers on Matagorda Island in Texas for a taste of forensic driftology. Where does a lot of this garbage come from? Uh, I would say most of it's probably local in the Gulf of Mexico and a fair amount from South America. And one example of local stuff is are these uh, whistles, which came from life preservers from Katrina. With objects large and small, Matagorda Island is awash with strange foreign items. And this flotsam can sometimes demonstrate the behavior of currents in unexpected ways. Certain beaches collect, attract right shoes, and other beaches collect left shoes. Why would that be? Because left shoes get steered differently than right shoes. It's a fundamental aspect of drifting. Anything that has a little different shape will go to a different beach. If you notice, the barnacles are growing at the waterline. Right. And see, so this is a keel of the little shoe. So it's, it's almost been steered a certain direction. It's, exactly. Who knew? <laughs> Farther up the beach, we found an actual message in a bottle. I found this at the 10 mile lagoon, a little 10 mile washover. Are you kidding me? Are no, I'm not kidding you. There's money in it. I'm, I'm going to open it when I get back to the house. Okay, okay. okay. What does it say? 18th of November, 2006. Dear Finder, we are a Swiss couple cruising aboard the Norwegian Sun. Our position is CA 25 North, AN 88 West. They could have at least used a wine bottle. <laughs> One bottle is a single data point, but lost cargo, like a boat full of shoes, can provide an abundance of data. It was a cargo container spill, so what do I do next? I pick up the phone and I called the Nike company, and they told me where the shoes went overboard. I had a point A. I learned from Nike that each shoe has a serial number, there were 80,000 lost. This is a scientific bonanza. For someone who tracks the movement of trash, a bounty of 80,000 traceable items provides a rare opportunity to study the currents. It also helps Kurt and Jim to fine tune Oscars by comparing computer predictions with the real findings of beachcombers. 80,000 sneakers is big science. What started for Kurt as a series of plastic data points floating on surface currents has led to a consuming concern about the quantity of plastic in the ocean. Where does it go? Every seabird on the planet has plastic in its stomach. Every sea turtle has been autopsied, has plastic in its stomach. It's everywhere now. Kurt isn't the only one who's concerned about the amount of plastic in our oceans. Seattle marine biologist Jeff June is looking at ways to clean up the ocean mess. I'm involved with several cleanup projects. One of them is here in Puget Sound, removing lost fishing gear, derelict fishing gear. We're employing a side scan sonar device that uses acoustic energy to virtually map the seabed for a wide swath. And we can detect the individual marine debris items and then come back with divers, grab the item and bring it back up to the surface and recover it and dispose of it properly. We figure there's probably millions of tons of plastic and other types of marine debris in the world's oceans. And it stretches from the Arctic to the Antarctic, from the Indian Ocean to the Pacific Ocean. It's found everywhere. What do you think an archeologist of the future would expect to find on our beaches? They're going to dig down and they're going to find a layer of plastic. Probably not very thick, a half inch layer, but it's going to be worldwide. And it's going to be uh, just a layer of plastic. And the archaeologists are going to go back to their laboratory and they're going to say, oh my god, we found them, the plastic people. The work of Kurt Ebsmeyer and his friend Jim Ingraham is making waves in Washington. The National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, NOAA, is studying ways to clean up the miles of trash roaming our seas. Meanwhile, maybe if we all took a trip out to the Great Garbage Patch, we just might think twice about where we toss that next plastic bottle. For Wired Science, this is Zaya Tong.